the latest, strangest twist in the bizarre story of Robert Durst, the estranged son of one of New York's wealthiest real estate families who has been suspected of three murders dating back, well, more than 30 That's years. That's right. He was finally arrested in New Orleans on Saturday, charged with murder. Call with the help of that HBO documentary, The Jinx, and what a stunning finale last night. ABC's Ryan Smith is here with all the latest. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, George. For years, police investigated Robert Durst and the murder of his longtime friend, but now in the HBO documentary about him, The Jinx, Durst may have jinxed himself with what appears to be a confession. There it is. You're caught. Overnight, a dramatic moment captured when Robert Durst, long suspected in three murders, apparently thought the cameras weren't rolling. Kill them all. The shocking finale of HBO's documentary series, The Jinx, airing in the midst of a bombshell off-camera, too. The eccentric New York real estate heir arrested for the 2000 shooting death of his friend, Susan Berman. We much expected this was coming. ABC News learning that the 71-year-old was apprehended at this New Orleans hotel on Saturday, where he was registered under a fake name, Everett Ward paid in cash and was in possession of fake documents. The FBI thinks he may have been trying to flee to Cuba. This morning, the LAPD, which issued the warrant, is crediting additional evidence that has come to light in the past year. And no doubt, the jinx provided some of those incriminating clues. Did not tell the whole truth. Nobody tells the whole truth. The six-part series profiling not just Berman's death, but also the unsolved disappearance of Durst's first wife, Kathy, in 1982, and the death of his neighbor in Texas in 2001. Durst acquitted after claiming self-defense. Durst sat down for hours of interviews for the documentary, adamantly denying he killed anyone. It was two years after the taping that the director realized Durst had made the off-camera comments, killed them all. But the real smoking gun, some say, this never-before-seen letter given to Jinx producers by Berman's stepson, who says Durst sent it to her a year before her death. Even Durst admitting it is eerily similar to an anonymous note sent to police when Berman died, telling them where to find the body. Same misspelling. The writing looks similar and the spelling is, is the same. It wasn't until the cameras stopped rolling that he appeared to crack. Durst officially denies killing Berman, but authorities have long believed he had a motive, allegedly wanting to silence her about the disappearance of his wife. This morning, even Durst's long estranged brother, who runs the family's multi-billion dollar real estate empire, telling ABC News, we hope he will finally be held accountable for all he has done. Durst appeared briefly in court Sunday and was ordered held without bond pending a hearing today. Now, his lawyer says he will agree to go to Los Angeles to face charges. And as for why he was in New Orleans under a fake name and with fake documents, his lawyer says he wasn't running, but rather seeking privacy, George. So many questions there, Ryan. Let's bring some of them to Dan Abrams right now. I guess you hear that piece of tape. First thing you say is, wow. <laughs> and you said this doesn't happen in real life, right? The idea that you're doing a documentary and then at the end of the documentary, you get what sounds like a confession off to, camera off camera to an unsolved case involving a high profile guy i mean it, you know this, you wouldn't believe this if it were if it were a fictionalized movie. now the legal question coming up right now is will that apparent confession be admissible in court i think it's likely the, the only legal question will be sort of the sanctity of that tape meaning where was it who had control of it? Could it have been manipulated? Is it accurate? Um, those are the sorts of questions that will be asked. There's no doubt that his defense team will try to get it excluded from evidence. But I think it'll be tough. I mean, remember, you're in the middle of doing a TV interview. It's not like you have an expectation of privacy there. And they're already raising the kind of questions you asked. So the timeline is going to be key. When was this tape discovered? When was it turned over to authority? Because the defense is going to want to put both um, Mr. Jarecki uh, and his team, who made this film, on trial. And they're going to want to put the police on trial. And they're going to basically try to create this scenario where together they worked, right? That this idea that the police, in conjunction with Jarecki and his team, worked 
to bring down Robert Durst. And they're going to challenge the timing of when things came out. Oh, my goodness, he gets arrested the day before the finale of the HBO um, uh, documentary. So those are the sorts of questions you're going to hear not just from the public, but from the defense. And we're going to post some of them. Andrew Turecki is going to be your live exclusive interview coming up in the next half hour. But one other thing that could be raised by that tape is, you know, Durst clearly uncomfortable, you know, seems to be talking to himself. Could this lay the groundwork if they want for an insanity defense? It could, but I think more likely what he's going to say is the same sorts of things he said before. Oh, come on. I was, I was testing them. Of course I knew I was still mic'd up. Um, I knew that. Um, and, you know, I didn't mean any of it. I was just saying it to, to see how they'd respond or something like that. I mean, that's what I'd expect, not an insanity defense. Okay, Dan Abrams, thanks very much.